is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting, very hot episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. So in this episode we're going to be talking about reasons your plants stop flowering. It's a very common question we get here on the channel, especially this time of year. So I wanted to highlight some reasons why your plants might have stopped flowering, why they might not be flowering at all in this episode. Let's get into it. So this question most commonly comes up around topics like tomatoes and peppers. But I also want to make this video apply to all things that fruit and flower. So I want to make this video apply to things like beans, cucumbers, zucchini, watermelon, any of your melons, cantaloupes, uh, any of your squash plants, things like that. Because I think that this, uh, that the topics that I'm outlining apply to all of them. And I want to answer all of those questions and concerns so that uh, it can help out the most amount of people possible. So uh, the first reason why your plants will stop flowering or might not be producing flowers at all or might have flowers but don't set fruit is also another thing that I kind of want to touch on as well, is it's too hot. It is so hot today, which is why it's not going to be a long episode, that the, the, the plants are essentially just trying to survive. They're just barely hanging in there. And this happens at around 80 to 85 degrees. What happens is the plant will actually send a chemical signal to the flower uh, that says, hey, if I've got flowers, they can't set fruit. It's way too hot. It's going to require too much water. It's going to require too much energy. And that's just too much stress on my body and I risk dying. So I'm going to stop fruiting or I'm going to drop the flowers that I have or I'm not going to fruit at all. And that's why a lot of people think they have blossom end rot in the summertime is because their flowers fall off before being pollinated. Generally, it's because it's way too hot. You can probably hear the cicadas. It is loud as heck out here because it is roasting. And um, we're talking 95 degrees today with 75% humidity. So uh, they actually have heat advisories out today and um, all week because it's just been so relentlessly hot, which is actually why I haven't been done doing videos. <laughs> it's been too hot to even do videos. So uh, I just stay inside in the air conditioning and uh, wait for it to cool down. Um, but so that's the first reason is it just gets too hot. Um, when, you, when your plant gets stressed, the last thing it wants to do is set fruit and heat is the most common form of stress that your plants will undergo. Now different plants will stop fruiting at different temperatures. Tomatoes will stop fruiting at around 80 to 85 degrees. Peppers are a lot more heat tolerant. They can tolerate something a little more like 90 degrees before they stop flowering. Essentially the pollen is rendered sterile because of that chemical signal going into the plant and it essentially does not allow the flower to be fully set. So uh, different, different plants will, uh, will have that trigger at different points. Um, obviously the cooler weather the plant is, like beans, the sooner that chemical signal will be sent. Um, this also does things like triggers flowering in things like your lettuces, spinaches, um, and your leafy greens. It will actually trigger those to flower um, because likewise they're trying to reproduce and uh, since they're a leafy crop and they're not a fruiting crop, they, they need to survive as well. So it'll also trigger in a bad way those flowering. Same exact reason. So that's your first reason. Now the second reason your plants will stop producing flowers or might not be producing flowers at all is you're giving them too much synthetic nutrients. Now us organic gardeners, we don't have to worry about that as much because organic nutrients can be, uptake, uh, can be uptaken when the plants actually need it. So a plant has a root system that has a, a network of almost like your brain sending uh, a, a signal. Um, and that signal is a response from the leaves that say uh, we need this nutrient. It could be nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium. It could be any of your nutrients, even micronutrients. It sends that signal down to the roots because the root system is the uh, essentially the it's the stomach of the plant. It needs to digest those minerals so they can be uptake to the plant. So what it will do is it'll send that signal down to the roots saying, hey, I need you to find this nutrient at all costs and uptake it. But if the plant has too much synthetic nutrients, synthetic nutrients are always plant available. That means the plant will uptake them and does not have a regulator, meaning that it will simply just keep uptaking. This is commonly seen with things like nitrogen. If you give plants too much, uh, too much plant available nitrogen, they'll simply keep growing. They'll simply stay green, they'll, they'll have a lot of foliage, but they won't produce a lot of flowers. Now again, that's another reason why I encourage you to grow organically, is because when you give them organic forms of nutrients, the soil microbes and soil bacteria can work in combination with the plant roots to make things plant available only when the plant needs it. And that's exactly why in organic system, this is not a big uh, cause for concern for us. It's generally things like heat or some of the other uh, things that we're going to get into. Um, but 
for those that are growing inorganically or are transitioning from an inorganic garden to an organic garden is something that you have to remember and keep in mind that that might be a reason why. And so um, people are often really concerned that it's, uh, that it's a lack of something. And it may be a lack of phosphorus, but generally, more often than not, the soil that you have has plenty of phosphorus to induce flowering. It's simply just nitrogen that is taking priority because the plant's objective is to grow and to, and to actually thrive. Its secondary objective is to reproduce fruit, which reproduces offspring for a future generation. So if there's no shortage of nutrients and its primary nutrient is nitrogen, it has no incentive to produce fruit. And, that, uh, and therefore it'll just continue growing because plants are advantageous just like you and I are. So if they don't have to apply a lot of effort, why would they? The third and most common reason why your plants don't produce flowers or stop producing is a lack of water. See this beautiful tomato here? It's gorgeous, it's huge, isn't it? These tomatoes, they're the first sign of a lack of water because they get something called blossom end rot. But blossom end rot does not just stop at tomatoes. It actually extends to any crop that produces fruit. You can have beans that have blossom end rot. You can have cucumbers that have blossom end rot. Peppers, zucchini, squash, it doesn't matter. Any of these crops that produce flowers and then fruit can suffer from blossom end rot. And what blossom end rot is, is not always a calcium deficiency, which we'll get into, which is another reason, but it's generally a lack of water. There's usually a lot of calcium, especially if you grow organically and you have a lot of compost and, um, and mineral supplements added to your garden. Calcium is usually not in any short supply. Therefore, we don't have to worry as much about the calcium, but the plants can't uptake the calcium because there's no water. Plants need water in order to uptake that calcium, which is, which, uh, which is what is responsible for producing nice, true, beautiful fruit without any of those black spots. And so the first thing I look for when I start to see blossom end rot is, do I have enough water? It's not exclusive to just tomatoes, it's inclusive to any plant that produces fruit and flowers. So keep that in mind if your flowers are falling off or not being produced at all, it sometimes might just be a lack of water and the plant is too stressed or can't take up that calcium. Now the fourth reason why your plant might not be producing flowers or dropping the flowers is it's just not mature enough yet. Every plant has a maturity date. Beans will mature a lot faster than say an apple tree. But any plant that produces flowers and fruit has to be reaching a mature stage. In trees, it can take several years. In beans, it might take 40 to 50 days. But sometimes people are a little impatient. I definitely fall into that category. And sometimes we just really want fruit so bad that we think there has to be something wrong. Why isn't it producing fruit? When in reality, if you're just patient and let it reach its maturity stage, it'll generally produce fruit. If everything is fine, you know, if the temperature is fine, you're watering consistently, you're fertilizing fine, and the plant looks healthy, generally it's just a patience issue. And sometimes that really honestly is more often than not the reason why your plants are not producing fl fruit and flowers yet. All right, and the fifth and final reason why your plants might not be producing flowers or the flowers might be dropping off or the fruit that's on the flowers might be sterile is because of a calcium deficiency. So as I talked about before, so this is what happens. This is blossom end rot. See how nasty that is? This is a watermelon. See, melons are susceptible to blossom end rot. And this is because of a calcium deficiency. Calcium can happen because, like I said, the water can't, uh, the water is not present in the soil. And other times it's a calcium deficiency for sure. And I'll tell you how you can tell. All right, so I had to get some shade. It's way too hot out here for, for any longer than like a 10 minute video. So uh, how do you tell if you have a calcium deficiency or just a lack of watering that's not allowing the calcium to be uptake? Well, it all has to do with the leaves. If the leaves are really limp and they're very uh, kind, of wimp, uh, kind of wimpy and floppy, generally that's a calcium deficiency. The, the, uh, the most telltale sign between a calcium deficiency and a lack of water is just how structurally sound the plant is. If it looks like it's kind of feeble, it looks like the leaves are barely holding their own. Generally, that's because there's not enough calcium to add rigidity to the plant cells. Plant cells rely on a rigid structure, and the only thing that makes up that rigid structure is calcium. So if your plants don't have that rigid structure, and you see something like this, more often than not, about 75 to 80% of the time, I'd say it's usually a calcium deficiency. Now, it's very important to understand that calcium is something that I add to my garden regardless. So how does this type of thing happen? Okay, it can happen just based on where you're growing it. I made the mistake of putting a brand new young, uh, a brand new young watermelon plant next to some fully established squash and pumpkin plants. 
they are very nutrient hogging plants, the squash and the pumpkins. Had I planted them at exactly the same time, they probably would have held their own. But because the root system is so established in the pumpkins and squash, most of that calcium and nitrogen is being uptaken by them and the root system for the, the watermelon is really small. And that's what led to a small plant to begin with, which also obviously led to this because there might be calcium in the soil, but the root system is so established by the other plants that in my case, that was the cause. If you have a plant on its own and it's just kind of in a, in a pot or a container or a garden all of its own, but it's struggling to survive, it's probably just a calcium deficiency in general. In my case, it's just a, it's just a, a root system hog from those other plants. And that was a mistake on my part. And once you see this, you can't reverse it. You can't uh, fix this, it's done. It, that's why I pulled it off. It's gonna go in the compost pile. But you can, uh, I mean, in my case, it's kind of permanently ruined because it's, those other plants are uptaking that calcium, not allowing this watermelon to uptake the calcium. But in your case, if it's on its own or if it's just a, like a, a tomato or a pepper that's suffering from blossom end rot, you can apply calcium and you can fix future fruit. This fruit's gone, but future fruit can be fixed. So I hope this tip, these tips helped you out. I really hope that you get out there in your garden and just remember that uh, um, fruit and flowering is important, but sometimes it's just important to let the plant talk to you first and, and let the heat die before you start fertilizing or uh, you know let the heat of the day go before you start watering. Um, let things take a natural course and, uh, and do what you can but realize there's certain things that are out of your control like the temperature and the weather and that just you know that's just a natural course of gardening. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Please give this video a huge thumbs up if you did. It helps this channel and helps um, our videos get spread around to more people that would like them. And also if you have any friends that are suffering from something like this or a lack of flowers make sure to share this video. Um, as I always say, uh, just spread this video around as far as you can because there's a lot of people that could probably use this information. So as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch y'all later. See ya.